Then we'll call a meeting to order. If I can get everyone to stand for a moment of silence, and then we'll ask Miss Saint to leave some place to play. <laughs> spoken with each of uh, each of the two council members that aren't here tonight. Uh, I knew that Marvin had a conflict uh, that had been on his calendar for some time. For those of you that don't know, uh, I don't think I'm breaking too many HIPAA rules. Uh, uh, Millie had knee surgery last week uh, and uh, was going to try and come tonight, but I encouraged her not to. It's pretty hard to be mobile after you've had your knee operated on. Uh, so, Mayor, do you notice how it is to have the two of them here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking to Nellie. <laughs> I don't know. I'm taking care of it. It is kind of quiet. He's pretty quiet there. I've noticed that there is a difference in the ambiance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have two sets of minutes to approve. Uh, the first set is our regularly scheduled meeting of July the 11th. If you'd like to look those over for any possible corrections. Make a motion. Motion's been made to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Second the same. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 And then we have the meeting, our special called meeting, uh, our workshop meeting that we had with the fiscal court and uh, our friends from Stamping Ground and Saberville on July 9th. Motion made. Motion's been made to approve. Second. And second. All in favor say aye. 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 Each of you should have in your packet a copy of the check register. If everybody would indicate that they've received that check register. Thank you. Then, Artie, we get to you early. Public comments, Ms. Artie Jenna. Hi. Hey. It's thriller. It's thriller time. It is thriller time. Goodness. It's thriller time. So, this is just a little info. Thank you. Um, this year we're going to ask for our street closing a little bit earlier this year. We looked at the calendar and uh, we tried to work around uh, Lexington's thriller and it uh, happens because of when uh, Halloween falls this year, I believe it's on a Sunday, uh, we are actually going to try to do it a week earlier. So we're actually going to propose the street closing for Saturday, October the 22nd. And that does not conflict with any ball games. I don't think Scott County is playing. McKay is not playing, so it should be 
uh, there, there shouldn't be any problems with scheduling with um, um, the police to patrol because they always do a great job but sometimes if there's other things going on they get a little stretched so and then uh, last year we did have to do our rain date which is on a Sunday and um, so I'm, I'm going to really kind of put that out there with uh, our police department this year so they're more aware that that's a likelihood we have a little breakdown in communication but you know it's Sunday that's kind of typical I think everybody wants to kind of do other things but we do have to have our rain date so that's it yeah so um, we are proposing for the street closure on October the 22nd from the museum all the way down to um, Broadway. Uh, we usually do it from six to nine. Um, this enables us to do, um, this past year we added several things. We were trying to get the community more involved with uh, some costume contests. Uh, we had uh, several uh, local people uh, be our judges and that went over and all the proceeds from that go to the Amen House. That's what we do. We raise, we raise money for the Amen House and we raise canned foods for the Amen House. And um, So that's basically it. It's just asking for your permission to move forward with that. We have all the information on this. And of course, we'd love to have all of you come down and be a part of it. It's usually, usually a pretty good time. So. Yeah, it's a great event. Uh, is there a motion for approval? I'll make a motion. Call. Second. straightforward uh, not one question before we vote best dog costume you know is that the best person dressed up like a dog or no 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 we actually, <laughs> have, we actually have people or the best uh, politician we were, that's yeah, a dog yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, it, we have several people bring their dogs down and a lot of them are in the contest and uh, but we have several dogs and the dogs are dressed up not the people uh, so. but if they want to enter if yes. they want to enter they can why do you have a dog? <laughs> no, but Sassy Boots needs to be in it. I, I was going to say, yeah. Sassy Boots gets get around. Yes, yeah, she, she does. does. <laughs> she does. She's very social. If this thing needs star power, then we, we Sassy got Boots can bring it. Well, you know, you know, if anyone wants to come help judge, we'd love to have you be one of our celebrity judges. So maybe not the right door. So. <laughs> so are we approved or not? Well, <laughs> you, uh, you, you will need to do your event worksheet. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, we get that from you. Okay, my, my daughter takes care of all that. She's my, she, but she's working. She has a job now, so, but she usually is the one who takes care of all that paperwork for me. Tracy knows Kristen very well. She's, she's my, she's my right hand girl, so she gets everything So in. what we'll be doing is proving it subject to Tracy to receiving the right paperwork. You don't want to vote. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we've got a uh, very wide spread on the over under on the, on the expected meeting length. So Eight. Yeah, I think we're going to beat that. Good. We'll see. How many? You're in. Eight o'clock or before? Yeah. Okay. Under uh, mayor's comments, uh, we'll, keep, <laughs> we'll keep them to a goal <laughs> roar here. Uh, uh, first off, an update for you on our center of town lot. Uh, we, are, we are not free from the EPA yet. We continue to have uh, some ongoing issues at the site. We're working through that process. We're working with the environmental contractor. Uh, we still haven't spent anywhere near the money that we approved to potentially spend. Uh, but we're just being very methodical so we don't spend money that we don't have to. And just wanted you to know that we're still having to deal with that. We don't have a clean bill of health, but we are taking steps to, to work toward that. Um, I mentioned at the last conference, and I think one or two of you have signed up, the uh, Kentucky League of Cities Conference, again, will be in Lexington from October the 4th through the 7th. Holly, I think you've registered. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that one is so convenient since we can, uh, we, all, we can all stay at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just, it's easy to attend. Uh, you'll also probably get a mailer about uh, the Governor's Local Issues Conference. Uh, 
that's an annual conference. Uh, it's typically in Louisville, so it does require an overnight stay. But when you get that, look at the agenda, and if there's anything that really captures your eye, uh, we'd be glad to register you for that. Um, it's been reported uh, in, in the media, certainly the news graphic and, and other sources, uh, the Bluegrass Stockyards have uh, made their decision on how they're going to handle their human waste, their sanitary sewer needs, and they have elected to use uh, the horse plug uh, as their connection to sanitary sewer. Uh, of course, we have a proposal on the table to let them uh, bring their sanitary sewer needs to Georgetown in return for a capital contribution to our pipeline construction. Uh, and they've reached their decision for their project. They're going to bore under the interstate and hook on to the Lexington sewer at the horse park. Uh, that does not stop our project. Uh, as we've talked about before, that we intend to go forward with this sewer project. The stockyards was simply one option that we were considering among the many different options that were on the table. Uh, uh, in an effort to move the project forward, uh, we have previously reported that we have uh, some council members, the judge, and, and others uh, met with the Division of Water. David, you attended that meeting, uh, and the Kentucky EPA uh, to get the assurances we needed from them about once we put our pipeline in place, they would require the trailer parks to uh, eventually decommission their package plant and sign on to our sewer line. And we received those assurances. Uh, since one third of the trailers, uh, there are 479 units between the two trailer parks. Uh, approximately one third of those units uh, lie in Fayette County. So, uh, Last week, I forget which day. Thursday. Thursday. Uh, uh, mem uh, representatives from GMWSS, Judge Leslie and, and myself, uh, sat down with uh, Kevin Atkins, who is the uh, Lexington Chief Development Officer, and Charlie Martin, who heads up their Public Works Division, uh, just to kind of talk through the entire We went over three, I think, major points during our conversation. Uh, the first was we wanted to establish whether or not Fayette County and Scott County uh, had the same uh, emphasis on maintaining the green belt between Lexington and Georgetown. That's a big public policy goal of ours, has been for decades, and we just wanted to make sure that Fayette County shared that public policy goal with us. Uh, what we learned from them is that if Fayette County considers any expansion to their urban service boundary, uh, it will be toward Winchester and toward the south. It will be the 64 corridor toward Winchester or to the south. They have no plans to extend their urban service area boundary or their utility system any further to the north. In fact, they're in the process of building uh, one of those massive above ground stormwater retention tanks. Uh, they, this is the third one they've built, and it's kind of in behind Embassy Suites. Uh, huge above ground storage tanks. It's part of their EPA consent uh, decree. Uh, and they said that that was about as far north as they intended to take their infrastructure. Wasn't that your impression? So, so we established that we have a, a shared goal of maintaining that green belt. Uh, we also wanted to talk with them about, uh, we know that code enforcement will be a very important tool that we use when we work on cleaning up the trailer parks. And that uh, they agreed with us that we should collaborate with that and have a joint code enforcement 
activity from both sides of the street. We don't need a separate effort from Fayette County and a separate effort from Scott County. We'll, we'll honor our jurisdictions, but we think a collective approach to those uh, code enforcement issues would be helpful. Uh, they took down Dusty Carter's uh, contact information and they're gonna be coordinating some of that with Dusty as well. Uh, that left the third major topic that's clear, obviously, for us, that was, uh, we know that this pipeline project is gonna cost about $3.5 million, and we wanted to put it on the table uh, about Fayette County making a contribution to our project since one-third of the trailers are in Fayette County. And uh, none of you will be surprised that the initial answer was, uh, we have no money, we have no funds budgeted. All of the funds that we have budgeted are directed towards satisfying the consent decree requirements. And you know, we don't have any money. Uh, they did acknowledge that likely our next step would be to make a formal request of Mayor Gray and the Fayette County Urban County Council to make a capital contribution to this sewer line project. Uh, we are going to sit down uh, with uh, Water Company and Judge Lusby and, and do our best to come to what we think is a realistic number for them to contribute. Uh, first thought I had was, well, if a third of the trailers are in Fayette County, then a third of the construction project ought to be shared. Uh, when I think about that in more realistic terms, we know that at, on the route of our sewer line to the trailer park, there are a couple of existing problems that we will clean up on the way uh, on that pipeline route. Uh, much the way we're cleaning up the problem that is Ponderosa and Spilletop trailer park, couple of little issues that we'll need to pick up on the way. So the right number may be 25% of, of the project. Uh, we then have to evaluate the way we intend to finance this project and a, a good part of that financing will come through revenue bonds based on the customers that are represented at the trailer park. And since we will own the customer base, we, we want to come to a we do have an expectation that our neighbors to the south help us finance this pipeline. So just wanted you all to be aware that we're, we're moving forward. We're not gonna let the stockyards decision stop our project, uh, but we're looking to make sure all of the partners that benefit from the project make a contribution. Can I ask a quick question, Mayor? Yes, did, did you all talk at all about, I guess maybe there's an additional trailer park on upstream on the other side of, of Iron Wolf even and Maple Grove. Yeah, I was Maple yeah. Grove. Mm -hmm. Was that, and maybe it wasn't, but. We, we talked about uh, the, there are 10 or 11 trailers behind Sam's mm -hmm. and our engineering drawings already anticipate a bore in picking that up. Okay. Uh, there's already, uh, uh, Jimmy Dwyer owns uh, a number of trailers on the, other side of the road and in fact it's already got a manhole in the back of that property uh, and it currently flows to the trailer park we know we need to pick that up on the way we recognize that when we bring a, a the final plan along with the financing to the council we're, we're going to be very specific about what we anticipate being on this project and what will not be on the project. We think the only way we can fairly bring it to you all for a vote is if you know exactly on the map which areas we're picking up and which areas we're not going to pick up. So we didn't talk specifically about Maple Grove. I'm just thinking, I don't know how many homes are in there. Do you all have any idea how many? There yeah. used to be, what I can remember in the past, seems like it was 25, 35, less than 50 yeah. is what's on there, but their their treatment plant does contribute into the right. what we're getting into our stream. I've had uh, 
was sitting on the planning and zoning uh, mm -hmm. committee at the time. A couple others that are on there, but uh, that that came up during one of our meetings. That you know, if we're going to take this on and try to make the improvements, that we need to identify all the problem areas. And this was this was denoted as one of those areas. And when I started thinking about, it, I'm like, well, maybe maybe Fayette County could pay, you know, a, a portion to get to pick up that. And they've got the they've got the EPA requirements that they have to meet. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of that money could be allocated toward putting in a line and, and eliminating this this package. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of, of possibilities. And the other thing I was thinking, and which you and I may have talked about as well, we have not supported, and I still don't support uh, a change in fee structure just because you cross from the city line over into the county line, and those are somewhat fluid at times anyway. But for a special project like this, I don't know why we couldn't have some type of special assessment tied to it to try to recoup or recover our investment a little bit quicker than we would from a typical project. All good points and, and all things that are kind of in our mix of things. Yeah. We think this is our opportunity yeah. to fix a lot of right. ills that, that have been around for a long time. So I think we want to be careful and make sure we get them all yeah. uh, into our thinking. And <coughs> we talked about wanting to size the sewer line, you know, to take care of the existing problems. Mm -hmm. And that's an inexact science. Right. Uh, you know, a sewer line is either six inches or eight inches, uh, but we do not want to create a template that leads to uh, additional development demands along a corridor that we don't want to develop. We do have an obligation to take care of existing problems. Uh, the other steps we're taking uh, is the water company has been working closely with inspired communities uh, to buy our, the successful bidder at this point. Uh, they're nearing the end of their 30-day due diligence period. And uh, they've indicated to Bob that they, they may seek an extension of their 30-day due diligence period. Uh, we know that they have all the information about our sewer line and what their privilege fee, what price range their privilege fee will be. Uh, they've also started the work of uh, trying to evaluate the infrastructure within the trailer parks. We know they've been up there trying to camera some of those laterals. Uh, I think their first couple of days was a little frustrating. In two days, I think they cameraed 500 feet just because there's so many yeah. breaks and, and cave-ins. Uh, they have been smoke testing and the good news there is the smoke in most units is showing up immediately through the vents, <coughs> which is what we want. Um, so whether or not inspired communities becomes the ultimate owner is important to us uh, because one of the options that we would like to have is instead of having 479 customers up there, yeah. we'd rather have one. right corporate ownership can work with us better to where we have one billing and then they take care of collections from their own customers. Uh, we're prepared to do it the other way, uh, but it would be much simpler from an administrative and a collections point, point of view uh, if, if we could avoid that. Do we not also have to change, if we're gonna, if we're gonna talk about taking on Fayette County, don't we also have to change our ordinance Sewer line. Well, and we've we've run sewer lines <coughs> stated there. I mean, that may have already been addressed. But that's not another county. That's another. That's in our county. But we're aren't we talking about running into Fayette County? I think uh, what I think will be more likely is the sewer line that we run will terminate in Scott County, and those parks are connected together. And they're in changes during the engineering, then I think we need to talk about that. Okay. Maple Grove would probably be the exception if, if, you know, if somehow we justified or say it kind of wanted to bring that in, that would be, I don't, I don't know how that would play into this. I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So uh, our 
discussions are ongoing with the uh, successful bidder. Uh, from what we know about that company, we're optimistic that they go forward and buy, uh, complete their transactions. <coughs> also realize that regardless of the ownership, the trailer parks are generating a remarkable cash flow every month. And their ability to generate that cash flow is predicated on being able to treat the sewer. So be it inspired communities, whoever it is, we have the same interest. I hope they're real inspired. I hope they're <laughs> very <laughs> inspired. So uh, stay tuned. We will be uh, continuing to pursue this and, and bring back uh, ways to finance this. And uh, we, we will follow through and make a formal request of uh, the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government. And then we'll discuss with the Finance Committee first and then the whole council uh, the dollar amount that we're asking them to contribute. Uh, we are going uh, just information we are going to resubmit the CMAC grant that we submitted last year. Uh, CMAC is an acronym for congestion mitigation and air quality. This is the one where we submitted for Cardinal Drive. Uh, and it is a significant match. Uh, it's a 20 percent match of a whole lot of money. But we, we figured we'd, we'd pursue it and then we'll talk about if we if we become the dog that catches the car, we'll, we'll decide how, how we handle that. Uh, also, I know a number of council members uh, have been very interested in the TAP grant, uh, Transportation Alternatives Program grant. Uh, and that is the grant that we want to pursue for uh, sidewalk assistance on West Main Street. We got the formal application package via email today. Uh, the window opens August the 1st, closes September the 30th. Uh, we have uh, uh, authorized Kyle uh, la last week uh, to send out an RFQ for three engineering estimates that we will need to be able to complete our it's going to cost us a little bit of money to get those engineering applications, but we think it's a, a worthy investment to make the grant application and have the preliminary engineering done. Uh, so that will work. We will get that grant submitted during August. Uh, we, we have to wait on the engineering estimates, but we will get that submitted in August. How long does it take for them to get back to you? Is it like a six months? Or? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. Usually it would take a month or two. Oh, that's good. That's an interesting question. Now, once again, uh, so the council will know the full picture. Uh, the Scott County Fiscal Court will probably submit a CMAC grant for uh, the portion of the legacy trail that runs through the Scott County portion of the horse park. Uh, we are going to submit a different CMAC grant for Cardinal Drive. Uh, and we've made it clear to people at the state level uh, and even our friends who support the Legacy Trail that in terms of a community priority, uh, we're going to be looking at the safety of school children more than we're going to be looking at the Legacy Trail as much as we endorse that idea. Well, do you know if the, what they're doing around the horse park now? Last year, Fayette County submitted a CMAC grant at the same time Scott County did for their portion of the horse park and mm -hmm. our portion of the horse park. Okay. Fayette County's got funded and ours didn't. Well, yeah, because they're bigger. They're bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but the work that's going on now is in the Fayette County portion of the horse park. Well, that's good and that would tie into the fiscal court's application if, if they're successful. Okay. Uh, and then if any of you have been up on the, the second floor, uh, we haven't fixed City Hall yet. We haven't fixed the real problems in City Hall, but 
we, we did we did agree to put down just a little bit of carpet upstairs and it looks a lot better. So if anybody's upstairs, it, it does look have a slightly more professional look to it. Uh, carpet's not as well. In fact, we did carpet squares so they can be replaced if we can get them in order so to speak. And that is all the mayor's comments. It's just 630. We're on the road. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Wilhite is not here with us tonight, but we have an able representative from GMWSS who's been in on a number of our meetings, uh, our internal strategy meetings and our work on the pipeline. Uh, and uh, you're wanting to spend some water company money tonight. Yes, please. I'm Sean Darrington. Mr. Wilhite's not available. Chevy Silverado crew cab with a service bed and a hitch. Uh, it's under the Kentucky State Bid Master Agreement. Uh, we do have a line item in our budget for it. Uh, it's replacing a 2004 vehicle and they budgeted 38000 Is there a motion for approval? I make a motion. Motion to bid. You the first in a second. Yeah. Yeah. Favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next is uh, for Clark Electric Company. It's a replacement pump. It's $12,401 uh, to the Colony Pump Station, and it replaces a pump that's 20 years old. Um, that will come out of the pump station upgrade line item in our budget. Make a motion. Motion's been made. Second. And second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, we'd like approval to renew our existing line of credit uh, for an additional two years and at the same terms. Uh, that's a $3 million line of credit at an interest rate of 2.75%. And that was originally authorized in 2009 by the council. Motion made. Motion's been made. Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you for your time. Tell Bob that if he'll send you more often, uh, you, <laughs> you'll get through quicker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Um, under item eight on our agenda, our illustrious city attorney, um, we had mentioned to you in a previous meeting uh, that we were reviewing a uh, cybersecurity risk assessment from NetGain. Um, and we had, uh, I had jokingly uh, <coughs> indicated that I thought NetGain had engineered the hacking attack on our phone system just to prove to us that we needed a cyber security <laughs> risk assessment. Uh, but the, the, the digital world is just a frightening place and we have so much sensitive data and uh, as a municipality, we have a very high standard that we're supposed to meet to protect people's data. Uh, so we, we brought you the uh, cyber security risk assessment. It's actually in two parts and we could easily break those up and, and stay uh, below your bid limit, uh, but we need both elements done. Uh, it's a service, it's not a com uh, normal commodity that we would have to bid. No, it is slightly over the council's normal limit of $10,000. Uh, given that it's a service, it's a little hard to bid. And I think it's our recommendation that we go ahead and undertake both modules uh, at the total cost that you see. Uh, Andrew, do you want to? Yeah, I, I want to add that having a cybersecurity audit, which is what this really is, uh, it has been on radar for quite some time. And this is, this is kind of, to me, the last piece of bringing us into more modern times. And I, it's tough. Interesting 
first time and it's the best song in it, but I, uh, I wholeheartedly recommend it. It was fantastic. And it was worth every penny. So it's peace of mind. And I, I, I imagine they're going to identify things that just absolutely need to be fixed. Um, hopefully those won't be super expensive fixes. A lot of it will be practice changes about how we conduct business, how we use our computers. But these are things that are important for us to identify. We just simply can't do that on our own. So this is really just a, kind of an evaluation of what we have and where we are and what we need to do. and How much exposure we have. Yeah. And David, I would expect from this yeah. to follow recommendations that may cause tuition. Yeah. It's interesting how the cost breakdown, the smaller portion of the cost is actually them doing a, an analysis of our physical technical um, security, but the bigger portion of it is actually them testing. They're actually purposely going to try to hack our network using known uh, techniques. So it will identify holes that you don't find through just a normal assessment. So it's pretty robust. Okay. You know, it's been over a period of time, I just want to say this, that, you know, our system has been such a relic for such a long time, and I think we have slowly but surely taken it to another level, and this is just ongoing. It's not going to stop. Mm -hmm. So I um, commend you for continuing to stay on, and it's been one of my biggest things. So I appreciate it. I'll, I'll also add to that that really we have, we have an obligation under Senate Bill from a couple of years ago is to uh, undertake as, as much as possible to ensure the integrity of our data and also to be able to identify any data breaches and to be able to <coughs> tell anyone whose data was breached about that. But this is just another part of, of making sure we're meeting those obligations. And since we broached the topic, uh, we have worked with uh, Time Warner to identify the cost of all the international calls that occurred while we were hacked. And I think it was in the $1,500 worth. Uh, Time Warner has agreed to reverse all of those charges. So we are going to be charged for none of those calls. And that particular security hole has been closed. We'd like to know how, how many others we've got out there. Make a motion for approval, Mayor. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. If there are no further questions, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, item 8B, uh, when Andrew and I put the agenda together, uh, we had gone ahead and put first reading of the code enforcement ordinance here. But I've already spoken with a couple of council members. Uh, we understood when we put this on the agenda that we were willing to have first reading tonight, but we're equally willing to, to wait two weeks. And a couple of council members have already asked about they would, they would be more comfortable with the extra two weeks. Uh, for those that could not attend the workshop, that gives us time to sit with you if we need to and talk through the content and the decision points that we made. So with your permission, uh, we'll hold first reading of the code enforcement ordinance until our next council meeting. And I also send you all the revised, revised, revised version. There's just a couple of little grammar issues that I found, and there were a couple fill in the blanks that we had from the presentation that I need to fix. So I'll, I'll send that to you all. Do you need a motion for that, Mary? Um, just vacate. It's your table. Sorry. Okay. We're just setting stuff up. Uh, but we, we've. We know Stamping Ground, Sadieville, and the fiscal court are working on the same timeline, so yeah. uh, uh, we'll put that off two weeks. Uh, item nine on your agenda. Ms. Clark's going to give us a quarterly finance update. Thank you. Talk about it in the microphone. <laughs> well, we found out that microphone didn't work, so. <laughs> It'll pick you up anyway, with all these fancy microphones we have here. Okay. Uh, uh, here's our quarterly finance report for June. As always, um, especially this end of year when uh, I'll try to 
to bring this back to you either via email or something to update because we still have a few days left in this month. A lot of our June tax returns get submitted the last day of July. So there are, is some missing revenue from these reports that will be filled in later. But we'll start with the payroll tax collection. Um, the percentage analysis that you see are done through the month of May. Uh, the month of June, even though we're showing 844,000 of revenue, is not complete. We had transfers from the revenue committee through July 21st, so there's still a few more days. Even with that, as you can see, we have collected 10,491,000 in payroll taxes for this fiscal year, and we budgeted nine and a half million. So we have easily beat that budget. And if you come down below that, right above the graph, rest of the incentive payments that we've been making on the Toyota incentive. The total incentive payments for fiscal year 16, then they just started in October, so we didn't have a, the full year picture, but from October to June were $2,156,980. So if we could have added that back to the $10.4 million, we would have had $12,647,000. Which would have been about 526,000 more than last year. So we are continuing to grow our revenue. Um, so you can see that. But even without that, we did beat our projected budget. And just as a reminder, since we are in a brand new fiscal year, uh, this year we budgeted 9.8 million uh, for payroll taxes. So we budgeted 300,000 more. And as you can see, we budgeted. <laughs> We know that we'll share it with you, but it uh, usually comes a little later. And then they had a uh, leftover, excuse me, they had a leftover credit of around 400,000 after the 15 fiscal year. So whatever taxes are due come January, they'll apply the 2.4, 4 or 5 million of estimates, and then they'll apply the $400,000 credit that they have left. And we'll see if they have a credit or tax due at that point. Straightforward. In 
insurance premium tax. This analysis, as far as the year-to-date comparisons and percentages, is complete through May. Um, the majority of our insurance premium tax returns roll in here the last couple days of the month. So they just have to be postmarked by July 31st. Um, as of May, These quarterly reports, I think, are, are uh, particularly since we're in this new environment with the incentives and, and the way we're learning to manage our budgets, these quarterly reports become real important and uh, I hope they give, they give me a little confidence as we go through them and I hope the council feels the same way. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it proves that we budgeted carefully and that we're uh, outperforming. Questions for Stacy? Okay, Stacy. Uh, also, a resolution accepting multiple grants? Well, it's actually uh, supposed to be a resolution accepting the SNAP grant. SNAP grant. Well, we've gone back and forth on this, but we have some grants that we get almost an annual basis, and but they all have a different period. If one starts in January, one starts in April. The SNAP grant actually started July 1. Uh, this is our second time receiving it. SNAP grants, uh, I'm sure Council uh, recalls, uh, the SNAP uh, acronym uh, Supplemental Nutrition, Supplemental Nutritional Aid Program. This is the food stamp program. And our grant is for purposes of uh, uh, following up on food stamp fraud, so which is a problem to the system. Program. So this, this gives our officers some additional funding uh, look for those fraud cases that undermine the SNAP program. And it does not require a match. Is that right, Stacey? How much is it? $43,384. So we would accept a resolution from the council authorizing us to accept that grant. I make a motion made. I second. A second. Okay. If there are no questions, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Are you, are you <laughs>
you stay up there with the firefighters? I'll stay up there. You can come on if you want. We had uh, we had included in, in the fire department's budget to uh, replace some flooring in Station Three, so I think that's what we're done tonight. Yeah, we saw your all, and we were like, "Hey, we got to get some too." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're just here to ask for your all's approval to uh, accept the lowest bid of thirteen thousand two hundred sixty-two dollars and thirty cents to replace the flooring for Station Three. Motion. I'll second. That motion's been made and second. Questions for Matthew? No, all, in, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> hey, while I've got uh, Tim and Matthew both here, uh, uh -oh. just, just want to say that uh, both doing an outstanding job in their roles as uh, fire inspector and fire marshal. Uh, not only uh, working with our businesses to make sure their pre planning is done well, but You've asked these two gentlemen to take a lead role uh, along with Dusty on some of our code enforcement activities. And uh, just working with citizens in a, in a respectful way has produced great results. And I uh, just want to say in front of the council that each of you have done a really nice job. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Mayor, I had a business talking to me that you all had been in and actually had helped them. They didn't understand what the problem was or how to correct the problem. Mm -hmm. And they told me how helpful you all were to work with them and try to get them to understand what the problem is and what they needed to do. And then you came back and checked it again. And so they were complimentary to you both. It's pretty nice when, when folks who are being made to do something mm -hmm. are complimentary of the <laughs> folks who are making them do it. Uh, that tells me that we're doing this right. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Sherry, Parks and Recreation approval to purchase. This will be the second Silverado truck we bought. Okay. Hopefully, I wasn't at the same meeting. Motion. Motion's been made. Second. It's cheaper than a water company for this. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Is that? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks, Sherry. Thank Sorry you. to make you wait so long to buy oh, a truck. No problem. Thank you. And now, Chief Bossy would like to buy some Chief. police cruisers. Chief Fossey would actually like to buy six police cruisers, but tonight he's only buying three. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, we're going to buy three yeah. chargers for 25800 apiece. Uh, we have cameras. Um, we should have some uh, video kind of issues that come up, but we're, we're also going to buy some cameras. And I'm going to mark up really nice to uh, put an upgrade. This year, we are going to buy these three chargers, and we have budgeted for the police department to have six vehicles. The other three will be cameras. Are those going to be used primarily in parades, and they're not really? Uh, well, two, are, two will be administrative, okay, and the administrative. other will go to our community services person. Oh, okay. That's the lead person. Yeah. Uh, we we'll take it to all the schools and all that kind of mm. stuff. But we'll mark it up real nice. We'll use it for upgrades. 
Well, uh, Holly, we're working with, uh, actually talked to Will James about mm. this and what our intention is. And uh, he's got us working with Toyota fleet sales uh, to, to for some things like uh, we, he wants this car to have a six cylinder engine. That their snake bid price is a four cylinder. Mm -hmm. We want uh, a super heavy duty alternator because that's what we burn up in regular yeah. cars are alternators. Uh, we, we'd like to see if we can get the one that we're going to stripe up. We'd like for it to have rubber bands and not carpet. So we're working with our fleet sales people to understand how we do that and then how we bid it and make sure we stay legal as we do that. So, so we're not quite ready to buy the other three tonight, but we do want to get a cheap uh, a charger. for the chief. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And chief, we, we will not let the other three orders lay any longer than they have to. We'll get those addressed as quickly as we can. Um, and last on the agenda, but first in our hearts. That was Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> it is Robert. Brilliant. Robert would like to buy some herbs. <laughs> Robert would like to buy a bunch of herbs. <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, this is our uh, every year thing. We have 28,000 budgeted. We're down to about 180. Uh, I plan on bringing this to first meeting in August, but uh, the uh, uh, vendor called. He first told me 30 days uh, lead out before we get them, but then he said it's 45. We're giving out about 20 to 30 a week. New hunting, some people get that two of them, mm -hmm. which we like, the last one to get two. So we really don't lay it on ground. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'll make a motion for you to first procure herbs. Thank you. Motion's been made. Does anybody else want to buy herbs? Mark wants to buy some herbs too. <laughs> <laughs> Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Anything else, Robert? Can I ask Chief or Robert a quick question? Yes, I might call him Chief occasionally. Well, I'm sure we all does. do. Everybody <laughs> does. Um, you all are doing a great job. Appreciate everything that's that's going on. Um, it, it seems like every every time somebody's requested something, you've been right on top of it. Well, we're trying. We we got a long way to go. We're yeah. trying. They're doing. Guys are doing good. Seems like things are heading in the right direction. Heat's kind of. Oh yeah, I bet so. Is there anything we need to do in preparation for winter? And, and well, uh, we did take in 300 tons of salt uh, in June, so we got that. We got 900 more we can buy through the MO y'all did in, uh, in the end of May, first of June. So uh, we are storing uh, most of that out to the county garage. Our barn is full on jack. He, he's got two uh, vents out there in that barn. He is going to give us one. Said over about a thousand tons. So Good. Uh, probably I talked to Mike and Frank, and they they said probably October we'll go ahead and order and try to get the rest of it. So we should be able to hold most of it. So at least probably all we would have to not get until we start using it would be about 300 tons. So we can hold most of it and knock on wood. And it's just a terrible winter. We should be in pretty big shape. And uh, the guys are, you know, getting the trucks ready. We, uh, the maintenance guys, are that's on their, on their punch list to do is start getting the trucks ready. So right now, August, September, uh, kind of busy with the party on the squares and the festival horse coming up the week of the 9th or something like that. So once we get past that, we'll. Closer to full staff than we've been, but there's still one driver shy. Yeah, and, we're, and 
you know, there's a there's a lot of big demand for CDL drivers right now. Uh, you know, a lot of competition. Yeah, a lot of competition. So. Yeah, I guess when the council did our tour of, of public works, you know, when we all got sworn in on that cold winter day, not too long after anyway, uh, there was a lot of equipment there on the premises, and uh -huh. some of it was not in the best of shape. Uh -huh. Have you had a chance to? Inventory what what we need to hold on to and what we might be able to we have uh, we have done some yeah uh, I, I, Before I know a lot of it was before I got here, but the council the last couple of years has done a great job Helping them get back up and getting vehicles and uh, we've, we've got a new truck dump truck order should be in any day I've called them once a week for the last three weeks. So uh, the one ton dump that yeah. you approved uh, We've got a lot of stuff that we probably need to start looking Tracy's talked two or three times on what we're going to do there. I was just wondering if there's some things that we could surplus yeah. to bring in some money yeah. to maybe if you needed something else. Yeah, uh, yeah we'll, we'll be probably having a list before you, before winter. Good. Okay. Any other questions for Riley? Thank you. Thank y'all. Out the big ordinance. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You're the deck. I heard it. Your last one's about done. So, fifteen um, minutes. It's so okay because it's hot. If you go to the over under, it's good to be in the middle. You know where you're going <laughs> to <laughs> put the pressure on us, though, and that is not fair. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Uh, Karen, uh, I do have. I have four items. Uh, <laughs> one is for Robert, actually, on Horseshoe Drive. The a uh, crew came out with the inmates and they cleaned like behind Horseshoe Drive. The gentleman that lives at 117 says they took away a whole bunch of debris, but they left a pile of it and then they didn't come back to get that. Okay, I'll, I'll check on that. Okay, and then um, the gentleman uh, on 718 Bourbon Street, we talked uh, months ago about lights and on Bourbon Street where it's dark down there, is that 118? A Bourbon Street. That, that's that's down where we went. Uh -huh. Yeah, that is down where we went one way. He called uh, the shop to ask if we had been in progress and where that was, and I told him we had a council meeting, and I would ask the mayor. So. Um, My recollection is that you talked about it, and you said you would address the court and ask us if you thought we were close. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it. I, I thought. I we think in talking to Kyle, it was a question. We've already done that. We'll better follow up with that. Yeah. Okay. There's no reason for that not to have been asked on that. Yeah. We need to follow up on it. Okay. And then uh, Party Living Square, uh, Mark and I both came down to it this uh, Saturday night, which was a huge crowd out here. It was a great turnout for it, as hot as it was out there. But one of the comments that came up with the Party Living Square, the same band that was here Saturday night had been at Midway on Friday night. And the folks were talking about how much clearer and better the sound was because in Midway, they didn't have the buildings to bounce off, and where it sits here, it bounces off the buildings. Mm -hmm. exactly. So the request is, or the thought is, or the conversation with the council, is to actually close the front of, close Main Street, and set the stage down here at the end, so the band can go straight down the street, and then they don't have as much of a reverberation off of the building. And so they said they could even close from down at the bottom of the street to where the alleyway is here mm -hmm. and be able to handle some of the traffic through there so they don't have to close up to Hamilton until um, later on in the evening. So they'd like for the council to start thinking about that possibility of setting the band out so they do sound better um, than they do back in this hole that we thought did. It's actually, it's actually nice that people are talking about this because as we've said many times, what we're dealing with are success problems. Mm -hmm. Yes. We've got big crowds, and yeah. folks mm -hmm. like to spill out beyond yeah. just the whole mm -hmm. square to the standing room only. Yeah. And, so, uh, and the police have been very reluctant to block Main Street unless it's a crowd control issue and they need to. Mm -hmm. So uh, more than happy to entertain an idea like that. Yes, that, that, and it, they did have to block Main because it was out in there. But it was a really nice, I mean, it was a really nice crowd. People were enjoying themselves, hot as Hades, and people were still enjoying themselves. And then one last thing. Chief, we ought to, we ought to, we, we ought to get together and, and 
talk with tourism about that and, and how it might work and, and then bring back a, a recommendation for the council. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, is Edder Lane. Is flooding at Edder Lane um, in that area that uh, they said they've had some flooding up there that's gone into basements. Uh, I don't have all the details of where, but there's flooding up there and now the bypass is running off the bypass more than it has before and what is the rain we got that last couple of, last, at the end of last week, Thursday maybe, that it flooded into some basement here on Edder Lane. So I get first more, time I've heard of the drain. Well, it actually was me too that I could remember, so I'll get a little more detail about that and bring it to you. I told her to come to the council and tell us about it actually. That's what I was told. Yeah, I think we're gonna have a lot of these conversations going forward. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I just wanted to ask one question when you were talking about the South Village and they had decided to go to excuse me, connect to Kentucky Horse Park sewer. Um, was there still a concern about it being over to our aquifer? Uh, kind of we, we had before the, the first question that we took uh, in a public way about the stockyards was whether or not we thought the the relocation of the stockyards to their proposed location would put our aquifer at risk. And we concluded after uh, Bob Wilhite and others did a bunch of homework that where they were gonna situate the stockyard and the way they were gonna do their dry manure handling system did not cause a threat to the aquifer from their site. I remember that, because I was on that tour. Yeah, and, and uh, it is true, however, all of the horse park is on top of our aquifer, mm -hmm. and we've known that for years. We, we've, you know, we've been concerned about uh, haystacks or manure stacks that that have been pretty commonplace at the horse park, and we want their cooperation there. Uh, we expressed a concern that them hooking on to a sewer facility that's at the horse park is over our aquifer, uh, but it's all a sealed system, and. So we first signed off on whether the physical location of the stockyards was okay, and then them going to the horse park for their sanitary sewer, we really had no say so in that. Okay. Just wanted to follow up with that. And I do think that, that long term, it will be our obligation to periodically monitor activity at the stockyards to make sure that it's still within the scope of operation that the Fayette County Board of Adjustments approved. And I expect it will stay within that scope. But well, I think it would be our job. With the horse park at this point. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Chuck. Mark. Oh. <laughs> okay. Somebody that brought this up to me yesterday, and it kind of made a lot of sense. We've talked a lot about the community garden, and you know, Millie's brought it up, and I have too. And they were saying something about, you know, in each subdivision where there's empty land, like say in Bradford Place, you know, on Showalter, you know, where there's land that developers cannot build on, about having community gardens there. And I guess my question would that be through the homeowners or through planning and zoning? And then they said something about it going forward, like in new subdivisions. Because you know, there's always a spot that somebody can't build on. And you know, the community gardens in the subdivision would make sense, because that way people could work together and they wouldn't have to drive to something and, right. and all that. So is this something that you know, a citizen brought up to me, which I thought was kind of an interesting concept. It is. Uh, yeah. It's a concept yeah. that, that right. for different reasons, we've talked with Sherry and people at Parks and Recreation mm -hmm. about forever. Virtually every development mm -hmm. has that little bit of land yeah, that is true. not good for putting a house on. Mm -hmm. So that's the area that developers typically want to give us for a park. <laughs> it's, oh, okay. it's the oh, least yeah. usable <laughs> land, uh, but it satisfies that mm -hmm. requirement. Probably what we've struggled with for a long, long time uh, is for to have the funds and the manpower to actually turn those into pocket parks mm -hmm. and then have them maintained 
So most of them have not been realized. Yeah, that's kind of what I, I would bet there, there are a lot of flats, that yeah. have little sections of land that yeah. have never been used the way they were intended to, just because it, it logistically it's so hard. Uh, yeah, well, that's why. Yeah. Oh, yeah, retention from yeah. from 10B. Yeah. yeah, we're we're working with uh, the homeowners association in Bradford. Mm -hmm. They're they've got a very aggressive plan, uh, even though only one third of the subdivision is paying into the HOA. Uh, they've managed their funds in such a way to where they've got a, some acreage that they are going to buy the equipment. Some fairly expensive equipment for a park in their neighborhood. Oh, that's so cool. They're going to yeah, control their own destiny well, with the same it. concept. Yeah. That's cool. uh, but the idea of doing that for a community garden, uh, people may find themselves in a floodplain. Mm -hmm. That could be. Sometimes they will be. But it's an interesting right. concept yeah. Yeah. that I think warrants some discussion. Yeah. Doesn't the area down behind the peninsula? It's not a about really bad place. I mean, it was supposed to be a 100-year flood plan. Yeah. And so it may not flood as, well, as bad, or it'll just be, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just think how fertile that soil is going to be. Yeah. If it's exactly. In it really yeah. is. Yeah. If, if they can not get washed away, <laughs> it, it'd be a great place to do it. Good deal. <laughs> uh, we've got the land behind Taco Bell and Dairy Queen down there. Yeah. The same thing, and that's a big part of the land. It talks about soccer field. Yeah, back in there. That, that is tremendously, I mean, every time it rains, we get Yeah, flooded. it was like that last, yeah, that big we, flood we had two years ago. We have so much <laughs> issue with the flooding down there and even Underwater. trying to get to mow that is almost yeah. an yeah. impossibility. Is that even the one that's down by, by the creek behind by some the of the creek. duplexes as mm -hmm. well? Yes. Same like issue? Taco Bell. Yes, that, that is major floodplain, and mm -hmm. um, there would have to be major work done there with drainage issues and things for that to mm -hmm. become a viable I think it, 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 it is a relevant question that on a going forward basis, mm -hmm. we could talk with folks. The planning and zoning could talk with folks about, mm -hmm. in, instead of uh, setting aside some virtually useless land for a park that's yeah, not going to be used, could we encourage a community garden? Yeah, uh, just it going forward, like as it's planning and zoning. And, so, and that is a discussion that I've had with planning and zoning is if they are going to set aside a plot of land for usage for, and they want to donate it to the city or to the county, is, is that it has certain parameters to it so that it is a usable plot yeah, of land and that it's not just a, you know, floodplain or mm -hmm. it's not just something that they can say they've given us for green space, but that it's a usable green yeah, space. Really Joe good. and Megan have I asked, and I have had that. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh. And we'll now, talk if it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When we step back and look at all those little opportunities, it, it, there's almost the possibility of a, almost a second Parks and Rec department <laughs> to fund all that and mow it and maintain it. Yeah. Sure. The land set aside, but we haven't done a good job administratively figuring out how to use that land. I think it's just grown so quickly. You know, it's just been so fast. And you know, do your best, you do the best you can with what you have, so that's great. Yeah. Anything else, Paula? No. David? Good. There's nothing else to come before the council meeting adjourned. <laughs> 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 <laughs>